Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our midweek Bible study. Uh, just give us, if those who are watching online, if you can hear us, you can hear this microphone. I know we have uh, microphone problems here. Uh, welcome to the uh, study. Hey, good to see you guys. I miss you guys. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see everybody here. Those who are here in person, if you're watching uh, on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, thumbs up if you like what we're doing here. And uh, uh, we're going to continue in a series, uh, a little short series that I did last last time. It was kind of a filler, uh, and I kind of ran through it real quick, and people felt that uh, I went through it too fast, and they wanted more of it. So uh, we're going to continue. Uh, this will be part two of our study in uh, cults, false religions, and uh, demonic teachings in the churches today. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a presentation that we did last time. We'll do it at the, kind of at the end of uh, this uh, study. And we will get back to our Revelation study because, boy, is it, uh, is it ever uh, applicable these days. We got so much going on in the news, boy. Uh, we got these uh, signs in the heavens, as God said to watch for. We actually have signs in the heavens coming. Big things are coming. And uh, I, I told you guys in uh, December 2024, I don't know. I just feel this is a very crucial year for humanity. So uh, stay plugged in with Jesus. You're going to be fine. Uh, but remember the truth, because as more darkness comes in, you know, when you can't see, it's hard to find out where you're going. Right. And the more darkness, the harder it is to see the truth. And that's what this study tonight is. It's, uh, it's eye-opening, it's dangerous. Uh, no one really wants to hear these studies, but I guess some of you do because you said you wanted more of it, and we rushed through it last week. So tonight, part two of our cults, false religions, and demonic influences in the local church. And I want to spend a little more time this time, since we're going to do a part two, on a lot more scripture and say why we're doing this. Why spend so much time on lies uh, instead of the truth? Well, it's simple. Lies are always gaining more followers. It's mere fact. How many people are following the truth versus following lies. Lies are winning, okay? The vast majority of the world follows lies. Lies are always more popular, uh, so lies are really the problem. And the more people follow lies, the less the truth is, uh, is able to be seen. It becomes less popular. It becomes hated. It almost looks like the truth is, uh, is bad. And everything else is good. And that's why Jesus says, uh, what is the way that leads to destruction? And many there be that go that way. Very few are following the truth. And tonight, I'm going to do what the Bible says to do. Uh, the Bible says to expose liars. Okay? Expose them. I know I, I get heat for this, as others do. Expose liars constantly, and then present the truth. So, we need to do this, and for our opening scripture, Ephesians 5, 6, it says, let no man deceive you with vain words. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. Now, before I begin, let's just pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for tonight, Lord. We pray you give the winds a mighty voice, and let's let this get out there, Lord. We're just so spiritually lazy. Uh, we're mentally lazy, and uh, we need to discern and not just accept everything. Please, bless this study tonight and let it go where it needs to go. Open up the eyes, even those in the very church who are being deceived, as you said they would. In Jesus' name, amen. So Paul, the Apostle Paul, is speaking to Christians here. Why is he saying this? Because it's happening. He says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. 
Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For we, us, we were once in darkness before we came to the light of the Lord. So walk as children of light. For this fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You're going to see that word truth peppered throughout this study. Not as you think it is, not as I think it is, not as we want it to be, not as we feel it is, but as it is. The truth. Verse 10, Paul says, proving what is acceptable unto everybody. Is that what it says? Unto the Lord. Proving, see, every pastor is called to prove what is acceptable to the Lord. Not to you guys, not to Joe down the road or Mary or this person or that person or this politician or that person or that politician. We need to teach what is acceptable to him. And I tell you today, very few things are acceptable to him. Verse 11, Paul says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of, dark, of darkness. But look what it says. But rather we prove in the King James, meaning expose. Expose liars. Expose frauds. Expose fakes. Even friends that you know who are getting led astray, tell them you're following something that is wrong. Well, I don't want to bother them. That's what they believe. I believe this. No, the truth is the truth. If we're on a sinking ship, there's only one, there's only one lifeboat getting off. Especially when it comes to spiritual matters. And don't just think these other gospels are just the way out of wicked things. Because at the end of the study, I'm going to show you these cults that we've been going through. There's bizarre cults every day. There's so many false teachings and they're all perverted and they mix God's word in with them, and, and you'll see, as you saw last time when we were together, part one, you can look that up, uh, how they try to sound so good. But we're also talking about the, the truths, I, I just say the truth, the beliefs that a lot of us love and embrace right in the church every Sunday that are actually doctrines of demons. How do I know that? I'm going to back it up with Scripture. Everything I say tonight, Scripture, Scripture, Scripture. 1 Timothy 4.1. Apostle Paul, speaking to young Timothy, says, Now the Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly, especially, that in the later times, we are living in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, heeding seducing spirits. What's a seducing spirit? Come on, this is good. You can come on. Looks good. Bite, taste it, eat it. Seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. I always picture like a hot iron going like the ability to see perversion and evil has been seared away. You can look right at lies and you won't see it. And people in churches across the country stand every Sunday morning and they hear lies and they've been so indoctrinated because it sounds so good to them that their, their, their hearts are, are just seared because they don't want to be wrong. And that's not even getting to the cults and the false religions. And I'm going to touch on some of these. Every day in church after church, false teachings about eternal life. As can you lose your salvation? Can you not lose your salvation? False teachings on who can be saved. Some can, some can't. The free will of man, no free will of man. Perversions are taught every Sunday. False teachings on Israel. Replacement theology. Did the church replace Israel? Church after church, confused, speaking blasphemy. False teachings on hell and heaven. People visiting them, coming back, writing books. Yeah. Is hell eternal? Is it not eternal? It's not a real place. Complete fabrications being taught all the time. False teachings on spiritual gifts. Are they all active still today? Are some of them no longer in effect, like cessationism? 
signs, wonders, healing, speaking in tongues. Deeming slain pastors is another new movement that's gaining ground because it's very theatrical. Lies and false teaching on what proves you're really a saved Christian. Do you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? What's the truth about that? Lies and false teachings on who can be a pastor, who cannot be a pastor, male or, or a woman. Lies on false teachings in regards to the end times, eschatology, preterism. Is this God's kingdom? Is he going to establish his kingdom and we're actually in it now and everything has already been done that we're reading in Revelation? It's already happened a long time ago. Being taught churches after churches, false teachings on the rapture. Yes, no, maybe, not now. I've had people call me out on Facebook, on social media, whatever I teach on the rapture, that I'm a demonic teacher, teaching a demonic doctrine. False lies and false teaching on baptism. Does it regenerate you? Does it not regenerate you? Do you need to be baptized as an infant? Do you need to be baptized after you believe? Does baptism get you to heaven? That's called baptismal regeneration. False teachings on modern day prophets and apostles. Yes, no. Are they real or are they not real? False teachings in regard to healing ministries. False teachings on why Jesus really went to the cross. Was it for a better life now or eternal life later? Huh. That's a big difference. Big difference. And the list goes on and on. But some will say, who cares? Does it matter? It's all good, Pastor Scott. And you, and you know when I teach on this, you know, you know how passionate I get about this. It's, it's a pet peeve of mine. You know why it is? Because it's a pet peeve of God. He's emphatic about this. He's not gray about you. Well, you guys can do that, and you guys can do that. It's all good at the end. No, it's not. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through him. The truth is not fluid. People say, oh, you're causing division in the churches instead of we should be all holding hands. Maybe I'm just jealous of the, their successes. Well, let's ask the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says in Galatians 1.6. The Apostle Paul, again, listen to what he says to Christians, okay? He's talking to a church. He goes, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Remember, Paul established how these churches, he goes away, he comes back. What are you guys doing? What are you teaching? Yeah. Well, we decided we wing it, Paul. We kind of added some things ourselves. That's where all the religions come from. There's no religions in the Bible. None. God has not established anything. But believer and non-believer, Jew and Gentile, that's it. And Paul says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you in the church who would pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every Sunday, there's a pastor some way perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ and everyone going, preach it, brother, all over the place. But listen to what Paul says. But though we, the apostles, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel than you uh, unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And listen, Paul repeats it. Whenever the Bible repeats something twice, Paul is like, the passion that I'm saying this, this is the passion that Paul is saying this. And he keeps on going. As we have said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accursed. And Paul says these great words. Who am I here? Am, am I here to persuade God or men? I'm not here to get you to like me. I'm here to preach what God wants, not what you want. If I preach what people want, I cannot be the servant of Christ. And then Paul says, but I certify to you, brethren, speaking to believers, that's how we know, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man's making. It's from God. You see, people, truth matters. 
more than really anything else, more than what makes you feel good, more than what you like, more than what you believe, more than what appears to be working by its growth. Meaning, and I was thinking about this, you know, I talk about pragmatism all the time. If something works, it must be good. But think about this. Think about this. If something is proven true because it gains a lot of followers, if, if that's the gauge of truth, then, well, when Nazism was in vogue, it was all truth. Because the whole country followed it. Well, a lot of people, everyone's in for it when it first happened. Is that how we base truth? There's a lot of Mormons following Mormonism. Does that make it true because a lot of people follow it? Scientology, a lot of people follow that. Does that make it true? Islam, a lot of people follow that. The NRA, the, not the NRA, the NAR, excuse me, is the, uh, the New Apostolic Reformation that's exploding with growth from church to church to church to church. And I always say, black walls, black ceilings, and light shows, you got to N-A-R church. N-A-R church. And it's huge. It's growing. So it must be true. Socialism is exploding across the planet. Does it make it true? Wokeism is exploding across the planet. Does it make it true? Now, I'm, if you notice, I'm not giving an answer to any of these things. I'm just stating things. You decide. Does growth and a lot of people following something make it right? Make it right? Yeah. Well, what does the Bible say? Not just Pastor Scott. Because as, as Paul said, even if I or an angel of heaven teach you anything else, curse us. If I teach you what is not truth, let me be accursed. Ephesians 6.11, Paul says, you, you know the scripture, I had it on one of my jeeps. Put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. Why? that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand. Verse 14 says, Have your loins girt about with truth. Truth. Acts 17, verse 10. I love this, and I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. What a great, smart group of people. So we have this account that Paul and Silas are going to Berea to speak to the Bereans of the gospel. They're going to tell them the gospel, but check out what these people do. Acts 17, 10, 11. That very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. So believers in the church say, Paul and Silas, there's, a, there's a, a place these people don't know Jesus yet. When they arrived there, they went to the synagogue. So probably Jewish people. And the, and the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica who didn't want to hear the gospel. And they listened eagerly to Paul's message, but with a little bit of skepticism. You check out verse, uh, as it continues, but they search the scriptures day after day to check up on Paul and Silas to see if what they were teaching was the truth. And I challenge everyone listening, whatever church you go to, challenge your pastor. Trust me, people challenge me all the time. Challenge your pastor. Tell me, where does it say that? And not just in one place. I want to see all through the scriptures. Why are we doing this today? Why are we doing this ceremony? Why? Why are we doing this for? Is this pleasing to God? Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul to the church in Galatia. An apostle, not of men, Neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Paul doesn't mess around. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches in Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory and ever, forever and ever. Amen. And then again, he goes... I marvel that you are so soon removed. Okay, I'm repeating that scripture. 
to another gospel. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Why does, why does John say that, the Apostle John? Well, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You hear, well, come with the church. I saw some spiritual things. You try those spirits. I'm not saying you're not seeing spiritual things. You're probably seeing a lot of spiritual things. But there are good spiritual things and there are bad spiritual things. And I've got a whole teaching on the Kundalini spirit that is the false Holy Spirit in churches all over the place. And because they see a movement of a spiritual type, they assume it's of God the Holy Spirit and it's not. It's the serpentine spirit, the Kundalini spirit that you see in tribes of Africa and voodoo type things. John says in verse 5, they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. The world agrees with the world. We are of God. He that knows God hears us, and he that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, truth, and the spirit of error. John just pointed out there is a spirit of truth, and there's a spirit of error. First, I went to church this weekend. Spirit was rocking and rolling, man. It was flying all over. Or was it the spirit of truth? Or was it the spirit of error? Because I'm not questioning that there were some spiritual things going on. I'm just questioning what spiritual things? From what spirit? Ephesians 5.14. Paul says, wherefore he says, awake those that are sleeping. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light to see. See then that you walk circumspectly. Walk around like a detective, keeping your eyes open. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. He says in verse 17, Therefore, don't be unwise, don't be an idiot. But understand what the will of God is. Not based upon what Pastor Scott says or any pastor says, but what the Bible says. And I know some people like me and Justin Peters, if you follow him on uh, in his ministry, they say, stop it, stop doing all this exposing stuff. Well, I stand with Paul about the abuse that I must take for this truth. Because I'm going to take the abuse until they close us down. But they won't because God will be with us if we tell the truth. In 2 Corinthians 11.10, a New Living Translation. As I love Paul here. Paul is just awesome. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me. And, and I'm, not, I'm not putting myself on the level of Paul. Paul could not make a mistake when he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. I can so I'm not putting myself anywhere near that league. And you know, I've told you a million times how many times I could be wrong. And when I am, I correct myself when people point something out. Yep, I was wrong on that. Let's fix it. Okay? But listen to what Paul says. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, I will never stop boasting about this all over Greece. Why? Because I don't love you? God knows. Because the people are saying, you just don't love us, Paul. You're just a cranky old guy. Guys, you guys decide what you want. I tell you the truth because it is the truth. Just like the prophet Jeremiah. You know, I'm studying the prophet Jeremiah. I'm obsessed with the prophet Jeremiah. Because the prophet Jeremiah had a job that no one even wanted to take. And it was to tell people they're all going the wrong way. And they did not want to hear it. And they hated him for it. And he would say, God, why do I have to keep selling this bad message? And he'd say, go and tell them. But they hate me. Here's, here's Jeremiah, always got bad news all the time. Yeah, he's warning them about God's judgment, Israel. And they hated him for it. And Paul and Jeremiah hated the job. Verse 12, he says, But I will continue doing this to cut to the ground, to cut the ground out from under the feet of those who boast that their work is like ours. Oh, we're on the same page. We're more Christians. No, he says, these people are false apostles. They have fooled you by disguising themselves 
as apostles of Christ. I've had a lot of people through pastors before. Oh, no, we're on the same page. I say, we are? No, we're not on the same page at all. No, I believe what you believe. Well, it's, no, we're not. We're not on the same page. I'm on the Bible page. I don't know what page you're on. But I am not surprised, Paul says, even Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder his servants can also do it by pretending to be godly ministers. In the end, they will get every bit of punishment their wicked deeds deserve. And there are pastors in the pulpits who are not saved, and even worse, they're demonic. And if they are saved, they're deceiving their people because they brainwash themselves. Well, everyone's coming, so it must be, must be really bad. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. They would never teach this stuff. Why? Well, people are not going to want to hear it. But what if you're commanded to teach it? Who are you going to listen to, the people or God? And again, people will say, what's the big deal, Pastor Scott? Why can't we just look past these issues? Why can't we be unequally yoked? Scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Paul says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of demons. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren, commanding the Christians in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you withdraw yourselves from every brother. Now, it can even be a brother in Christ that walks disorderly and not after the traditions which you received of us. If you're in a church and there might be believers, but they're going off this way, God says, back away from them. 2 Thessalonians 3, 14, If any man not obey our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. But this is an important point, verse 15. Yet count him not as an enemy. I'm not saying these people are our enemies, but admonish him as a brother. You need to call people and say, you know, I know you're going to this church, you're doing this and that, I know you're having a great time and you love it, but you're getting taught bad stuff. It's wrong. We're commanded to do that. And lastly, Jesus, Jesus should have the last word. Should he not... Not me, not any pastor, not any teacher, not any guru. Jesus has the last word. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders that are not of God. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. God's very own people can be deceived. Jesus says, Behold, I told you before. But anyway, and Andrew, we can get that projector going. We're going to get back to the study here. We're going to go uh, and go through these things. And there's a whole bunch of them. We covered about four of them last time we were together. I think we're going to try to cover four tonight. And we'll see how far we get time permitting. And let's see how this works here. Uh, this is a PowerPoint presentation on cults and false religions and the occult. And uh, I had to restart the computer because it froze. Okay. What was the, the title on the PowerPoint? It's uh, it's right in the middle. It's a black. It's a black icon. It says. Uh, you to find it. It's kind of like dark grayed out. If you can't find it, I'll, I'll find it. Oh. See, I told you that. Run, Pastor, run. Text it for Run, Pastor, run. Run, entertain the energy power. Run, Forrest. Run, Pastor, run. Run, Pastor, run. Okay, now we're back. Here we go. Okay. So last time we did uh, Freemasonry, we did Rosicrucianism, we did the Cabal Centra, we did Wicca and Negro Paganism, we did Secretaria. How do you say it? Okay, I can't say it right. Uh, uh, but tonight we're going to do 
uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna, but we don't switch that, Andrew. We're gonna do the introduction again, and I think tonight we're going to do spiritualism, theosophy, ECNAR, and astrology and horoscopes. Uh, so let's click on introduction there. Okay. Okay. Why is the knowledge of the occult important? Okay. That's why. Why are we teaching this in church? Occult themes are rampant in our culture. That's why. Television shows and movies are plastered. You know, the whole Harry Potter thing. Yes. It's just so, oh, let's get it for our kids. It's demonic stuff. And everybody thinks it's just fun. Now, some of these things are outdated. These shows are older. But if they were doing this 10 years ago, you know what's on. They have a show called Lucifer on now. Mm -hmm. yes, you know? They have all kinds of stuff. Books and computer role-playing games. Hold on, why did I do that? Entertainment can make the occult seem fanciful or foolish, mm -hmm. but the Bible tells us that it's dangerous and very real. It's not a game. Trust me. I played with a lot of these things when I was when I was in my dark ages. <laughs> my dark ages. <laughs> and I had a black room with 666 on the wall and a skull and an altar. I really did. And Ouija boards and I people, it's real stuff. It's real. And weird things happen. Okay? Christians live in a fallen world marked by a climate of spiritual warfare. And Christ's followers need a proper understanding of the occult in order to recognize and respond to it. You might not be interested in war, but the war is interested in you. And woe unto those who don't warn their people. If I die as a pastor, I want to die knowing two things. Anyone who came through these doors, they were warned about lies, and they got the truth. Yeah. That's all I care about. The care about them big and famous, or how many people come here, it's that I did what I was called to do. In the ancient world, many Christians were held spiritually captive by occult religions before their conversion. The Apostle Paul encouraged these new believers. He commanded them to expose these occultic groups, but warned against participating in them. Where are churches exposing these things? Ah, we just want to talk about Jesus loves everyone. That's it. Jesus loves you. You're going to be rich and have a great life. You know, love the genie in the bottle the right way. You'll get your wishes. Put money in the plate. That's the typical Jesus that you're going to see in churches today. Paul also warned against sensationalism and fascination with occult groups, Ephesians 5, 8 through 12. Theatrics in the church, it's like a, a Broadway play going on. The English word for occult comes from the Latin occulia, or to conceal. Oh, so the occult means concealing things. Makes sense. The practical overview is, uh, this is not to arouse an unhealthy, I don't want you guys to go and get involved in this stuff. Don't start poking around. Learn what I teach you and then stay away from it, okay? Because that's the danger. There is a danger in that. Okay. Characteristics of the occult. Those phenomena collectively known as the occult may be said to have the following distinct characteristics. And just think about this and see, are some of these things happening in churches? Uh, let's see. Okay. Number one, the disclosure and communication of information unavailable to humans through normal means beyond the five senses. The placing of persons in contact with supernatural powers, paranormal energies, or demonic forces. The acquisition and mastery of power in order to manipulate or influence other people into certain actions. Do you have pastors who are very charismatic like that, looking like they have powers and drawing in all these energies and saying, you can have these energies and these forces, grab onto them. Bethel Church in Redding, California, the, the, grand, the birthplace of the New Apostolic Reformation. You can watch what they do there. The occult takes many forms and is beyond the scope of this presentation to review them all, blah, blah, blah. I said that already. Uh, often occultism is, is 
practiced and promoted to organized groups, some of them are admittedly <coughs> religious. Some of them, oh, we just, this is our religion. This is our religion. Some of the movements described in this presentation, like theosophy, may seem small, but their influence far exceeds their membership. Okay, why these groups? Well, I'm gonna, okay, we want, okay, so uh, Andrew, click on that, okay, uh, yeah, click on that there, and I want to go to spiritualism, okay. Spiritualism, okay. No one founder, and I'm telling you, spiritualism is alive and well in the church today, okay? We got no one founder. You know, the founder was Satan, he's the founder. This ancient belief was widely popularized in the United States in 1848 by these sisters. I'm not going to spend time on these names, it's not important. Uh, Spiritualist Manual, 1911, okay? They have a manual. You have to, you'll find that a lot of these things, and what are you going to see? A lot of mention of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, God, all intertwined. Oh, Jesus is in there, so it's good. Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ by Levi H. Daly, 1908. Well, that looks like it's probably, we can probably read that book. It's filled with demonic lies. Remember, Satan doesn't come out with horns like this. He's an angel of light. He, he's a deceiver. He wants you to believe he's the good guy. Uh, other books that they have. And, and you'll see a lot of... Uh, uh, you'll see a lot of emblems and signs and, and uh, things that are, can be Christian-like. Like they even use the Bible. Interesting. They say that some of these spiritualists use portions of the Bible. You know who used portions of the Bible to deceive? Satan. He did it in the garden. He did it when he was tempting Jesus. Okay? He used the Bible. Well, my pastor uses the Bible. Is he using it properly? Is he using it out of context? I read the Bible. My pastor read one verse Sunday. You'll never get a one verse sermon here, people. Because that means the rest of the time I'm speaking. You don't need to hear me. You need to hear the Word of God. Key beliefs. Despite their clear denial of central biblical teachings, many spiritualists believe themselves to be practicing an early, authentic form of Christianity. Oh, this is real Christianity. Okay? We're doing the real stuff. Okay? So let's see what they do. God is seen as an impersonal power controlling the universe. Now, if you read that quick, you're like, that's right, right? Is that, I guess that's, or, no. God is an impersonal? In -person. Is he in? No, he's personal. He's personal. We have a personal relationship. We, he, that's what he wants. Yeah. And he does control the universe. See how we can just twist things, pull us in with a lie and a truth mixed together. And we always say that thing, if this, if this chalice here is filled to the top with pure water and I drop in one eye drop of cyanide, you can say, well, just one eye drop. It's mostly pure water. Do you want to drink it? No. no. You don't want to drink it. It's tainted. There cannot be no error. Jesus was a man, not God incarnate. Oh, so, see, we believe in Jesus. See, we believe in him but not God in the flesh. Wow. While on earth, Jesus was a prophet or an, an advanced medium. He's like, he was like guy doing, you know, uh, witchcraft. One believed to communicate with the spirit world. Do you know how many religions have Jesus? Islam has Jesus. Mormonism has Jesus. Jehovah's Witness have Jesus. Most of them have some form of a Jesus well, Jesus is there, must be good. Okay? A lot of religion calls Jesus a prophet, or he was a good guy, he was a social networker, you know, whatever. Jesus is now a spirit with whom one can communicate in the spirit world. Well, that's, that's tricky now. See, if you're not careful... Jesus says, you know, I can communicate to the spirit world through Jesus. Jesus, first of all, is not a spirit, okay? 
And that's a real tricky, twisted scripture. When we did Wicca, remember uh, last time, the word Wicca, which is a new for, a new way of saying witchcraft, they just changed the name to Wicca. Wicca means twisted. You ever see a Wicca chair? Anything that's wicked is twisted. It's twisting truth and lies together to form something that is destined or set to deceive. Some use the term Holy Spirit to refer to the spirit of a holy person who once lived. Corruption, he believes, after life on this earth, earthly plane, life continues in the spirit world. Well, life does continue. We're eternal beings, okay? Where one spirit may progress from one level to the next. Well, we know that's not true, okay? You're either a believer or you're not. There ain't no ladders going up there. Okay? And this, this is all alluding to things like reincarnation. Heaven and hell are considered just a state of mind. How many times have you heard people say, this is hell, right here, that I'm in it? You have no idea what hell is. It is off this planet. We were talking to our sister Krista. Probably in a black hole someplace. It's called the lake of fire. It's totally separated from God. No form of his presence or light. No light there at all. Okay? It's not a state of mind. It's a literal place where Jesus is alive. Some spiritualists believe in reincarnation and karma. You know, that's a big thing. Hey, good karma for you today. Reincarnation. Maybe I'll come back as a parakeet or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back as a rich person. That would be nice. But it's a lie. But it's very interesting. I had a horrible life. I'll kill myself, and I'll come back in a new life. Maybe that's what born again means. See how you can spin it? Occult practices. Mediums conduct seances to, con to contact the dead. Assorted psychic demonstrations. That would be a demo, because I, I was involved in a whole bunch of seances, people. You don't want to play around with that stuff. Church services. They have church services? What? They sing, and they have music, okay? They have sermons, too. A spirit message from the dead. Yeah, the dead pastor who's preaching it, because he's spiritually dead. Prophecies. Boy, how many prophets are coming out, on, out of the woodwork today? Everyone's a prophet, and they're telling you what the future holds. I'm not telling you what the future holds. I'm telling you what the Bible says the future holds. It's in Revelation. I don't have to make it up. It's already written. God already told us tomorrow's newspaper today. Spiritualists may use Ouija boards, crystals, crystal balls, and other instruments of divination. You think, this is like, this is sold by Milton Bradley. You can go to any toy store and buy this. I had one. I played with it. It is real. And things move all by themselves, people. Okay. I remember playing with my, with my friends, and that thing took over, freaked us out so much, and we were pretty cool dudes, okay, and into dark stuff, and we took it, we burnt it in the fire, okay? Wow. Spiritualism often attracts grieving people who hope to contact a deceased loved one. Now, talk about going to someone and really getting them when they're vulnerable, who doesn't, when you've lost a child or a loved one, yeah, I want to, you want to see that person, don't you? You want to talk to them. And for $99.99 on your credit card, MasterCard, or Visa, you can go to a spiritualist, and they can ask you how Bob's doing. Okay? Oh, and, and the, what would they always tell you? I spoke to your wife. She says she's happy. Everything is fine. Make sure you know you have find a new mate. It's all good. They'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Okay. Watch for the natural, the National Spiritualist Association of Churches, representing over a hundred churches. Wow. Ch the Church of Awareness. Now watch this flower here. It's going to come into purpose in a little bit here. There are many other small groups, but no single central spiritualist organization. So they actually are calling themselves churches. Watch for the symbol of the sunflower, regarded as the emblem of spiritualism. As the sunflower turns its face to the light of the sun, 
So spiritualism turns the face of humanity to the light of truth. Wow, doesn't that sound so good? Wow, that's beautiful. No, it's not, it's not beautiful. It's perverted, and it's a twisting of what is to what is not. Okay? Symbolisms and emblems, we spoke last week about voodoo and stuff like that, and about the, the symbol of the spirits of, of a coconut. And we told you about, uh, like two years ago, somebody left a coconut uh, by the church sign on a beautiful platter, trying to put a spell on this church. It's a true story. It's a true story. It's a true story. It freaked me out, I have to tell you. Because I didn't know, so why is there a coconut? <laughs> Under our church sign, on a beautiful platter. I said, it's got to be something demonic or So I looked up, symbolism of coconut, voodoo. Voodoo stuff going on. Okay? A system of beliefs uh, codified by a French author. It doesn't matter. I don't want to read these guys' names. I'm not going to give them any credit because it's a horrible thing. Um, uh, we see news articles by spiritual, uh, spiritualists in New York and uh, Florida. Uh, okay, now let's go to the main menu, Andrew. Click on that. See how our time is doing. Uh, hold on. I want to see if I want to go to. Uh, let's do. Let's do. Let's do Eknar. Okay, Eknakar. Okay, let's do that one there. Okay. Okay. Founded in San Diego, uh, CA by Paul. Twitchell, uh, Twitchell proclaims himself the religion of light and sound of God and the ancient science of soul travel. The okay, current headquarters is in Shannamassa, Minnesota. Key writings, uh, sacred scriptures, other books, uh, the Tiger's Fang. Ooh, interesting. An unmatched spiritual journey to the astral, carnal, mental soul planes into the heart of God itself. What? Wow, I want to forget the Bible. I want to read that book. Don't. I'm being facetious, please. Okay? I don't care about these other people. Key to the secret worlds. How many times do you hear these things secrets? Secret societies. Remember when that book came out a while back? It was on Oprah, The Secret. It was a big thing. Everybody wanted to get the book. It's a secret. You open it up, what is it? It's just it's just Hinduism, it's Buddhism, it's it's stuff with a new wrapper. Power of positive thinking, normal vision, peel. Uh, you can will things into existence. I will I if you believe that you're a millionaire, you will pay the millionaire. You know, that's what all those that's all for stuff. The, all the preachers, they, they, they do that. You're poor and sickly because you act like you're poor and sickly. Act like you're rich and healthy and you will be. Use the mind. And people go, yeah, this is great. Where's my credit card? I got to follow this guy. The flute of God. Wow, I didn't even know God played an instrument. It's a flute. The flute of God. Okay? And so these are all modern stuff, key beliefs. God is a formless essence consisting of light and sound called the Sagmad, said to be neither masculine or feminine, and the source of all life. See, that's very catchy today. This is what everyone can just jump into that and hold hands and get in a circle and sing Kumbaya and say, yeah, we can all... What's wrong if we just all agree on this and just live together in harmony? It's not the truth. That's the problem. I know it sounds great, but God is not uh, formless, okay? The light and sound flow out of the submad and return it to a current called the ek. The ek. Christianity is acknowledged as an alternate path. See, you can use this, and people say, see, it's, this, this echinar is pretty good, because it even promotes Christianity to a degree of enlightenment. So you choose Christianity, I'll try it. I'll choose Buddhism, you try Scientology. It's a big salad bar. Okay? The biblical ca uh, concept of the Trinity is not recognized by this belief system. Uh, now, check this out. 
Okay, Twitchell taught that the devil, and this is not just in this group, because the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, they have similar teachings about Jesus, taught that the devil is the Jehovah of the Jewish faith and the father of the Christian teachings. Therefore, we really see Jesus as the son of Kal Nar Jan, that is, the devil. What? Okay? We have Jesus in our beliefs. He's just the devil. Okay? Elsewhere, the group teaches that Jesus was the ek master in Judea. Okay? Holy Spirit is used as another name for the current. And, and religion of, of the light and the sound of God. Boy, if I opened up a church here in Center Reach and put a big banner, I'd have a million people coming. Hey, religion of light and sound of God. That sounds pretty cool. You're going to be doing cool stuff. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. I'm going to be twirling balls on you. you got to see it. It's going to be great. I'll be twirling lights. I'll be bouncing things. Uh, enlightenment or union with the submat is attained by tuning in. See, you guys got to get into the right current. You want the wrong current. You want DC. You got to get on AC. Okay? Through soul travel and following it as it returns to its sources. We laugh at this. There are people who are basing everything they are on these things and a, just a smorgasbord of these things. Out-of-body experiences, that's a big thing today. Okay, This is said to be taught only by the living master. I don't want to spend too much time. It's creeping me out. Uh, while so traveling, one can meet with the dead. Of, I think I can meet this guy if I want, if I jump on his uh, soul traveling train. I get to see him. I'd rather get to go and meet Jesus than meet that guy, okay? Uh, members called chalas pass through a series of initiations, the first of which often comes in a dream. Watch dream, people. Dreams are dangerous. Uh, I want to skip out of this uh, spiritual, you know, I love the names of these things. The Church of the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness. Yeah, that sounds, oh, it's the MS. Yeah. Where are you going to? I'm going to the church of the movement of the spiritual of the spiritual inner awareness. Wow, you must be really spiritual. Okay? Insight seminars, okay? Uh, they got they love seminars, okay? Related groups and calling uh, uh, Ford Johnson's higher consciousness consciousness society. You have to reach a state of a higher consciousness. I did that when I took a lot of drugs. I did that. Okay? <laughs> Gary Olson's Master Path. Oh, we're going to have a seminar. Master Path. Well, which one down? People at my work, we're all going this Saturday. There's this inspirational speaker. It's called Master Path. Oh, yeah. When I left, I just felt so empowered and great. You should go. Do you see? You've seen these things. You know how they happen. Okay? Uh, Andrew, let's just go. Let's click out of here. Uh, excellent. That's exactly where I wanted to go. Yeah, let's let's go right there, because we we got to get this. Astrology. Okay, astrology. You might think it's just a uh, silly thing here. Comes from the Greek astrologia, telling of the stars. It is a form of divination that interprets the position of the sun, moon, and planets as a meaningful position of a person's life, of an event, or any uh, entity that has founding that has a founding date, such as a con a country. Astrology is not astronomy, okay? Okay, astrology is basing your life on the movement of the stars. Uh, astronomy, okay, is studying your planets and stuff. That's normal science. That's a good science. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that. Where are they? Your horoscope, you know, you can read them in the paper, how many people follow your horoscopes, and, you know, newspapers, columns. What's your sign? What's my sign? Well, I can't go with you. You're a Sagittarius. I'm a Capricorn. We, you know, we, we clash. Okay? People live their lives by this stuff. I did. I always checked my horoscope. I used to have a little thing. I had a little golden Capricorn. You know, a thing I used to wear. And you're a Capricorn and I'm a Sagittarius. That's a problem. That's a problem. I go over there. Okay. Uh, the zodiac sign, okay, look at all these symbols, oh gosh, it's so demonic and stuff. 
Uh, the zodiac is an imaginary belt in the heavens divided by astrologers into 12 equal divisions or signs. Uh, three main types of astrology practiced today are Western uh, or uh, originating in the Middle East, India, China. Uh, they all have similarities, uh, signs and symbols. Each type of astrology has its own theories and very different zodiac signs. Uh, what do astrologers do? Uh, they use planetary positions at your birth to find out where your life and you know, you know where your future is. Uh, natural astrology, position of planets. I'm going to this because this is not important. What I want to do is uh, is I want to show you what the Bible says. Hold on. Okay. Honorary astrology chart done to answer a question. When you go to uh, one of those fortune tellers or chart readers, don't go to them. Don't have your cards read. Don't have your palm read. The Bible forbids this. Okay. What does the Bible say? That's what I'm looking for. Since it is a form of divination, astrology is forbidden in passages like this. Leviticus 19.26. Do not practice divination or sorcery. It's what the Bible says. We also gain insight into the Bible's view on astrology from such verses as Isaiah 47, 50 to 50. Astrologers and stargazers are mocked and condemned. So, astrologers and stargazers are in the Bible. Okay? Necromancers, those who speak to the dead, forbidden by God. Okay? We also get inside, let's see, uh, this, uh, Jeremiah 8, 1, 2, 10, 2. Those who follow, worship, and consult the sun, moon, and stars are condemned by God. Do not do it. Daniel chapter 2, uh, chapter 4, chapter 5. After astrologers and other, uh, and other diviners declared that interpreting Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Belshazzar's vision is impossible, Daniel, but you don't need that. Uh, let's see here. What makes it appealing? Uh, because it, it helps you in your life guide. I, don't, I want a map of my life. So these guys will map out your life. Okay? In troubled times, give me a, a map, a life map. God has a, my, a, a life map. Follow Jesus Christ, and he will give you eternal life. Okay? The Holy Spirit will comfort you and guide you. He is the comforter. He will discern. He will teach you all truth. He will give you the spirit of discernment. Astrology is not merely forbidden in the Bible, it's demonic, okay? Charles, whatever his name is, a former professor of astrology, writes in, in his book, What Your Horoscope Doesn't Tell You. Uh, as we honestly look at astrology, we begin to see that inheritance of, without knowing it, are banging on the door of which uh, can even establish knowledge of yet deceptive spirit beings. You are knocking on the door of demonic beings, people, when you play with these things, and you need to stay away from them, okay? And this is the last thing. Uh, let no one be found. This is Deuteronomy 18.10, and then we're going to close with a song. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his sons or his daughters in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, who interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, casts out spells, or, his, or is a medium, a spiritress, or consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord, and because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive you out of those nations before you. This isn't the Bible. That's, that's scripture to God's people, Israel, who are playing with these things. God says, don't do it. It's not a joke. Okay? So... I'm going to read a closing scripture, and Andrew, you can, I'll give you a chance to get a song up there. In 2 Corinthians 6.14, it says, Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can goodness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said. And God says, Therefore come out from them and be ye separate. Separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you, and I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Okay.